Amy Snyder. Many of you know Dr. Snyder. She's a PBEC associate veterinarian, but you may not know uh, too much about her background. She graduated from Cornell in 2004, and after graduation, she did some very interesting training. She completed an internship at a very famous surgical practice, Chino Valley in California. And then she went on to try to get a little more training. She went on to a two-year practice residency at Louisiana uh, State University's uh, School of Veterinary Medicine. And while she was there, Louisiana wasn't enough. She had to go all the way down under, and she spent a whole breeding season in Australia getting additional uh, experience there. Uh, she then began her career in private practice in New York State. And then she joined us uh, a year and a half ago, a little bit more than that, close to two years. In her spare time, she enjoys eventing her thoroughbred mare, Bella. She's a Pony Club graduate, like I am. And she's going to discuss Let's Get Physical, the annual physical exam and why it's so important to your horse's health. Dr. Snyder. talk about wellness care and helping you keep your horse, helping us help you keep your horse healthy and active. Um, why we're so interested in um, this is we want to provide effective, proactive health care to your animal so we can address problems before they become serious. And um, at the annual physical exam, we're going to talk to you about history and give you an opportunity to tell us a story about your horse um, and let us know if you have any concerns. And also um, establish a veterinary client patient relationship or VCPR. What is the veterinary client patient relationship? This is established when your veterinarian first examines your animal in person and accepts the responsibility to oversee treatment, compliance of care, and outcome of um, care. And also, your veterinarian agrees is maintaining a medical record. Um, this is required by the Veterinary Practice Act of New York State in order for us to treat and prescribe medications for your animal. So we must examine your horse in order to prescribe medications. We can't just do it over the phone. Um, and wellness care includes, again, history, physical examination, discussion of nutrition when you're feeding your horse, um, an oral exam and possibly dentistry, uh, talk about hook care, annual vaccination, uh, deworming based on fecals, and it should correspond to the life stage of your horse. If you have a foal, a middle-aged horse, or a senior citizen. And again, the history is your opportunity to tell us about your horse. Give us his or her story. Let us know what you're feeding him. Does he get any supplements? What's his job description? Is he a pasture pet, an event horse, trail horse, thoroughbred race horse, standardbred race horse? What's his job? Is he on any medications or has he been on any medications? Have you gone anywhere recently? Um, and what's his been? past vaccination history, how have you been managing deworming, and do you have any concerns we should be aware of? Are there anything new with his health in the past year? Here are some tools of the trade for the exam. Stethoscope, thermometer, pen light, weight tape. These are things you can have in your first aid kit as well. And very often if you call our clinic, we're going to ask you, did you take his temperature? That's something you can easily do to help us help you. One of the first things we're going to look at when we come into the barn is 
Is this your horse's normal attitude? Is he bright, alert, responding to his environment? Or is, is he a little dull today? Quiet or very agitated and nervous? The horse's attitude or behavior can be affected by disease, neurologic disease, or pain. Also, we're going to assess your animal's body condition score. And we base this on a scale of one to nine. One being very, very thin. Um, scale between four and six is ideal, um, depending on what your horse does and what his job is. Or nine is the animal in the bottom, very fat or obese. Um, and again, ideal is going to be based on the individual animal and their job description. And we like to use the body condition score to help us guide how we feed each animal. Um, some ways we can estimate weight are weight tape. Hopefully you all use weight tapes um, to get an idea of what your animal weighs around the girth. And Dr. Nash has informed us it works for men around their <laughs> pectoral region. Probably not for most women. Um, <laughs> another way to assess or estimate weight is um, this calculation on the bottom, where you measure heart girth in inches, body length in inches, and divide by 330. It'll give you an estimate in pounds um, of body weight. <laughs> So, has your horse lost weight since we last saw him, or, or are you having a, an issue with this, and why might it be occurring? These are kind of thought processes we're having. Okay, is the horse not getting enough calories? Can he not get to the feed? Or, can he not chew the feed properly? Like the horse, the mouth on the top, that horse has very abnormal teeth and may be having trouble eating. Or is the gut not working as efficiently as it used to? Is it not absorbing calories even though you're providing lots of calories? Um, and this can occur in older horses, they're not quite as efficient as a young animal. Or are they using those calories up a lot faster than they have in the past? Is there an underlying disease? Does the animal have cancer? Or is there kidney or liver disease there. Or maybe your horse has a new job and needs more calories using the energy so it needs to bump up the feed. The more common problem we see is weight gain. And the number one cause of that is we're feeding them too much or they're eating too much out in the pastures. So too many calories in and too little activity. And there's a free predilection for obesity. Ponies are uh, especially difficult. Donkeys, Morgans, Arabians, there's quarter horses. They look at food and they gain 100 pounds. Um, sometimes you may get a new horse and she's starting to get bigger and bigger, and you're not changing the feed, she may be pregnant. Um, so we, it's important to know that, or the abdomen may be getting rounder um, because of disease, parasitism. Um, sometimes the body isn't working as, as efficiently burning calories, metabolism slowing down, or body shape is changing. Um, one disease that's common in older horses is Cushing's disease. And the body actually kind of changes shape, loses muscle, but puts on fat in different ways than the younger horse did. Or um, metabolic syndrome, which is similar to insulin resistance in people. Um, and again, fat deposits on necks, back, rump, um, common in ponies and again these easy keeper types. Why do we care if the horse is overweight? 
The big one is laminitis, um, which is, as many of you know, a very painful process in the foot where sometimes, as in the top two pictures, uh, the cotton bone is rotating in the foot and again, it was very, very painful. Um, both conditions, metabolic syndrome and Cushing's disease, can predispose a horse to developing laminitis, as well as obesity. Um, if you have a mare and she's starting to get bigger and bigger and bigger, it's important to know that because she has special needs as well for feeding. Loss. You may ask you about, does the horse, is your horse out with a group? Can he get to the feed or somebody bullying him so he can't get to the feed? Is there plenty of fresh water in this cold, cold winter weather? Um, does that animal need a different feed program because his individual needs are not being met? Um, if we have weight loss or abnormal weight gain, we're going to look closer and find out if there's underlying disease. Um, some things we're going to encourage you to do are weigh your feed in pounds, that's hay and grain, and we may encourage you to have your hay analyzed. And why we want you to weigh your feed in pounds is, remember, a scoop of feathers is different than a scoop of pellets. As far as, oh, I feed my scoop of feathers, that's going to be a different amount of calories than a scoop of pellets. Same thing with, oh, I give them one flake of hay is different than one flake of hay. So, first part of the exam, we're going to look at uh, vital signs. Temperature. Very easy to do, taken per rectum. Um, there is a bit of variation in age. Foals are going to have a higher temperature than adults. In a foal, we consider a fever in a foal greater than 102.5 Fahrenheit. And an adult, greater than 101.5 Fahrenheit. And again, when you call the clinic, the first thing the people that are answering the phone are going to ask you, did you take the temperature? Easy to do and good thing to practice. And body temperature is controlled by um, the temperature center in the brain in a part called the hypothalamus. If, if we're examining a horse, which these situations hopefully don't appear at the exam, but they may. Uh, hyperthermia, actually the brain center has not changed its set point. The body's overall overheated. So heat exhaustion is an example. Anhydrosis, which means failure to sweat, inability to sweat. Those animals overheat. And some drugs and toxins that we are medicating a horse with or they ingest can cause hyperthermia. More commonly, we may discover fever or you may report fever. Um, fever can be caused by infection, cancer, immune mediated disease, uh, equine infectious anemia, which you probably are all familiar with, with the Coggins testing, not very common in New York State fortunately. And internal parasites can also cause fever. Um, too low is less common. Um, most situations we might run across that or cold, damp conditions. Um, most susceptible animals would be neonates, so foals, senior citizens, geriatric patients, or debilitated sick patients. Sepsis or systemic infection can also cause hypothermia. One, another situation where we get into hypothermic patients are generally anesthesia. Next system, we're going to look at a cardiovascular system. First, we're going to look at the pulse. Um, in this, again, foals are going to have a higher pulse than adults. Um, generally, adults, we think of normal range between 28 and 44 beats per minute. Um, this is something you can all practice with your pets. 
Um, and you can also feel the lingual artery, which is the top picture on your own jawbone. It's a little tricky, but you can practice there and then practice on your horse. Best not to feed him or her while you're doing it because the chewing makes it tough. Another place to practice is on the fatlock or pastor. And, and it does take practice. You may not feel it right away. Um, but, but it's a good thing to be aware of. I'm also going to look at the mucous membranes in capillary refill time. Normal mucous membranes should be healthy pink color. It indicates the um, number of red blood cells in the bloodstream. And they should be moist. And again, your mucous membranes are going to be similar your dog or cats, um, and the CRT, the capillary refill time. The capillaries are tiny, tiny blood vessels. Normal return, when you put pressure on it, it should become pink again in less than two seconds. And that indicates the ability of, um, to pump blood through those small vessels. Some abnormal findings we may come across are very pale mucous membranes is in the top picture, and that's a pole. Um, ictric or yellow mucous membranes in the bottom picture, or in the uh, left picture there, dark red or purple, or even blue, cyanotic blue mucous membranes. This may indicate anemia. That pole in the top picture may be an anemic pole and have a problem, or shock or again, systemic infection. They should be moist. So if, you're, if they feel dry, your animal may be dehydrated. And a prolonged CRT can indicate dehydration, shock, or low blood pressure. You may have a problem. We're also going to listen to your horse's heart on both the left and right side of their chest. And you'll notice we listen behind the elbow and when if you practice listening to your animal's heart you can hear two very distinct love dub love dub that's one beat um, we're going to listen to the rhythm is it a regular rhythm are there any murmurs and what does that pulse feel like is it a nice strong pulse we're also going to check the jugular veins Some abnormalities we may come across are a too slow heart rate. Hmm, this heart, this animal's heart's only beating 24 beats a minute. I would expect it higher, is there something to be concerned about? Or a very elevated heart rate in a horse just standing there. This horse, animal's heart rate 60. Why does it have an elevated heart rate? Or an irregular arrhythmia. Two most common arrhythmias are second degree AV block, and that can be um, common in a fit horse. They may drop a beat. Um, something that's problematic is atrial fibrillation. So again, an irregular heartbeat. Um, we may ask you, hmm, does your horse always have a murmur? Pick up a murmur when you listen to that heart. Murmur indicates turbulent blood flow or high velocity blood flow. And it can be physiologic. Um, say your horse has a fever or is colicking, they may have a murmur that goes away the next time we see them. Um, or there may be valve insufficiency. And the other common murmur you see in baby horses is patent ductus arteriosus. That should go away by day three. <coughs> So again, the questions we're asking, are these innocent problems or significant and do we need to look further? Um, next, we're going to assess the animal's respiratory system. Um, we're going to look at their respiratory rate at rest. And this is something you can do and know what your animal's general resting respiratory rate is. Um, and it's a good thing to do just watching them in the stall where there's no agitation. Count how many breaths they breathe per minute. Um, 
we're going to look at their, the, the character of their breathing. Are their nostrils really flaring, or do we just see a small flare? Are they having trouble breathing? Are they really pushing that chest, or is it a normal chest movement? We're going to, the respiratory tract goes from the nose down to the lungs. We're going to assess that during our exam. And their lung field is amazing. It extends from the shoulder to the last rib. It's on that picture on the bottom. Some findings we may come across during the exam, nasal discharge, a, a cough, a foul odor when we get close to the horse's nose. We may hear rattling noise in the trachea or crackles, which sound like rubbing saran wrap together or wheezing. You might say that hear a basket of kittens in those lungs. You should not hear that in a normal horse lung. Some common respiratory diseases are sinus infection or masses in the nasal passage, um, laryngeal dysfunction, maybe you've heard of um, Roarers is in this picture on the top. Of course, when exercise makes a loud breathing noise. Um, recurrent airway obstruction or heaves as the horse in the bottom is having trouble breathing and actually having to push the air out of the lungs. Um, inflammatory airway disease or pneumonia. Uh, next, we're going to assess the eyes. Um, and look at uh, the eyelids, the conjunctiva, which is the pinks of the eyes, the pupils, the corpora nigra, which if you look closely at your horse, these dark brown, fuzzy um, bodies that are in all horses, sclera, which is the whites of the eyes, the cornea, which is the glassy surface of the eye, the lens, and the fundus, which is the back of the eye, which we're going to use the ophthalmoscope to look at the back of the eye. We, we may come and uh, see that your horse is kind of squinting an eye, or he has a lot of tearing coming down his or her face, or he has swollen eyelids, or a cloudy cornea, or if we are in the dark barn and the pupil is very tiny, that's a constricted or meiotic pupil, um, or the, the cornea has a bumpy, irregular surface, or one or both eyes seem to be protruding or bulging, or one eye is, is sunken compared to the other. Those are abnormal findings. And some common things we come across with horse eyes, um, one, and this is mostly in foals, is entropion, where the bottom eyelid, usually the bottom eyelid, rolls in and the lashes rub the eye. Um, conjunctivitis, so the conjunctiva gets irritated. Corneal ulcers, many of you may be familiar with this, so the cornea gets scratched. Cataracts is in the middle picture there. The lens is opaque. Um, uveitis, hopefully not too many of you are familiar with that, but that's an inflammatory process in the eye that we may come across. Um, tumors on the eyelid is in the bottom picture there, squamous cell carcinoma. Um, and when we look in the back of the eye, there's a number of different things we may find, one of them being chorioretinal changes. Next, we're going to look at the hair coat and skin of your horse. You all know what a normal hair coat looks. should be nice and shiny. Uh, skin should have a normal feel to it. Abnormal hair loss. An excessively long coat is in the previous picture. Um, lumps and bumps. Changes of color, pigment, or itchiness. Some, some common 
things we'll find on the exam are oral plaques. So this top course has what we call oral plaques in the ears. Um, find tumors such as sarcoids, as in the middle picture there, that's an example of a sarcoid. You may find melanomas, which if you have gray horses, they're common black lumpy tumors. Um, rain rot and dermatophilosis, so a infection of the, the hair coat usually runs along the back and rump. Uh, insect hypersensitivity, so that itchy horse probably is reacting to insect bites. Eyes is in the bottom horse. Um, we have warts. Or if we see a, an older horse with a very, very long hair coat, we're going to be very suspicious about Cushing's disease. Next, we're going to assess the gastrointestinal tract. I'm going to ask you about your horse's appetite. Does your horse have a good appetite? Um, uh, we may assess the um, oral cavity and find out if your horse has been cared for by other people or we, we may do an oral exam and Dr. Early is going to talk to you in length about that. We're going to listen to the gut sounds and assess the borborygmi, which is the normal gut sounds. It's a fun word to say. Um, and we usually listen in the caudal flank area, upper and lower on both sides. So there's different parts of the gut that are on both sides of the abdomen. Look at your horse's body weight again and ask you or observe the manure. Again, the gastrointestinal tract goes from the mouth to the rump. Um, starting with the oral cavity, we'd like to do a full exam with a speculum under sedation and evaluate and take care of the mouth. Um, the esophagus to, to the stomach, small intestine, cecum, large colon, small colon, and comes out the rump as manure. Horses can have problems in all aspects of that, as hopefully you're not too familiar with, but you may be. Um, some abnormal things we may come across on exam are poor appetite, loss of weight, abnormal dentition, a history of choke, um, history of colic, or abnormal manure. We're going to ask you a lot about your horse's manure. Is it too soft, is the bottom picture, too hard, too little, and we're never going to complain about too much. <laughs> Most common problem we run into with the gastrointestinal tract is colic, and, it, and colic means abdominal pain, basically. Um, it, colic can arise from many, many, many different causes. Some of the, the common things we may see are gastric ulcers, um, small intestinal problems, uh, large colon impaction, uh, gas colic, more serious uh, large colon twist, an odd thing in this area we don't see very often, fortunately, is uh, enterolith or uh, stone. Horses can actually create stones in their colon. Um, diarrhea or cancer. Next, we're going to look at the musculoskeletal system. And look at overall your horse's conformation, muscling, assess those digital pulses by the fetlock of pastern. Um, pick up each of the four legs and assess the range of motion of the joints. Um, we're going to run our hands down the horse's legs to assess joints, soft tissues, so the tendons and ligaments, feel for any bony lumps, and look at your horse's uh, hook for shape. Is it too short, too long? Is, does, are there growth rings present? 
and is there something we need to address? Some things we may find on exam are conformational defects. And we really want to be looking at your young animals, um, especially with conformational defects, because that's a place we can change the growth pattern. As in the top picture, that bull's very crooked and had some intervention, and now his legs are straight, and he, he's going to be okay as far as soundness in his future life. Um, we may palpate increased digital pulses and have concern that there's something going on in the animal's feet. Um, you may see hook abnormalities, muscle losses in this animal, weakness, <coughs> stiffness when we uh, flex the legs, lameness, um, you may feel lumps like splints or uh, appreciate tendon or ligament swelling. And again, muscular, there are many, many, many disorders that um, happen with the muscular cell system. Some things that we may come across in our exam are angular limb deformities. So that previous picture of the foal with the crooked legs, that's, that's an example of an angular limb deformity. Again, contracted tendons, most common in young animals, but not only where the tendons are tight and the animal actually is not able to flex the joints the way they should. You may come across a club foot, um, laminitis, hook abscess, uh, tendon or ligament injury as in this middle picture, that's an obvious injury there. Um, you may palpate splints or have a, a, a joint that has decreased range of motion, may have changes like this animal where it has very severe arthritis. Some other things we run across quite commonly are trauma to the legs, puncture wounds the leg. And some muscle disorders that say we have a very heavily muscled horse is this guy here. Um, we may be concerned depending on his breed, that he has HYPP, or hyperkalemic periodic paralysis, a, a disease that affects horse horses. Or um, another common muscle disorder that you may be familiar with is exertional rhabdomyolysis, or tying up. Another one, polysaccharide storage myopathy. And this is, uh, the last one is very rare, but has started occurring in this country, is seasonal pasture myopathy caused by the ingestion of box elder seeds, a common tree um, that the seeds contain a toxin that is very toxic to the muscle sphere. Next, we're gonna look at the urogenital tract external only, um, and obviously males and females are going to be different. Um, we're going to look at the sheep. Depends on if your animal has been gelded. Make sure he has two testicles, and you may or may not see his other parts, depending on how he's feeling that day. Um, may or may look at her mammary gland and vulva. Um, some abnormal findings may come across. Masses in the sheep or um, perineal area. Mammary gland swelling. Say your riding mare has a full, is getting a full udder like this. You may say, is your mare pregnant? Oh, I don't know. Um, uh, undescended testicles. So if you have a cold, and we palpate up there, and there's only one nut. You, most commonly, there are two testicles. One is hiding in the abdomen, probably. So, um, important thing to know. Um, you may report behavioral problems, scallion-like behavior in your gelding. Maybe one testicle got left behind. Or your mare is starting to act like a stallion. 
she may have problems with her ovaries. Um, you may also report straining to urinate, um, which may prompt us to look further. Or, my horse's stall is a lot wetter than it used to be. If that horse is an older patient, again, you may be concerned about Cushing's disease. Some disorders we <laughs> come across are, again, cancer. Squamous cell carcinoma is in this top picture, and it sometimes, uh, most commonly, will affect a pink-skinned animal. So paints, appaloosas, animals with pink skin around there, sheep, vulva, eyelids, um, melanomas is in the, the lower picture. Um, mastitis, not too common in mares, but we do come across it. So an infection in the mammary gland. Cryptorchidism, that means undescended, undescended testicles. So uh, you have a cold that you've had your whole life that never had palpable testicles. He probably has two testicles in his abdomen. Or you have a colt with just one testicle. There's another one hiding. Um, kidney disease, we do come across, but not very often. In foals, the, their bladder can rupture and they can develop problems shortly after birth. Or again, Cushing's disease, you may report to us the horse is urinating a lot and drinking a lot. Last system, we'll look at the neurologic system. And we're going to again assess your horse's attitude. We're going to evaluate the cranial nerves, so the nerves that control um, muscles and sensitivity in the head around the eyes. We're going to look at your horse's overall facial symmetry, um, so symmetric muscling and symmetric shape. We're going to look at the tongue and muscling of the tongue. We're going to feel the inside the nose and inside the ear that your horse can respond to those things. Also, we're going to overall look at the muscling of the horse and, and assess for symmetry, watch your animal walk. And when we're taking the temperature, evaluate the tail or nasal tone. Some abnormal things we may come across on our exam are dull attitude or hypersensitive response to things we're doing with the animal, um, abnormal response to the cranial nerves so they're not feeling our, uh, when we're uh, evaluating them and not responding normal. Not eating, not able to eat normally. You may report it or if we observe the animal doesn't appear to be able to swallow properly. Or there's areas of muscle loss or weakness, weak tail tone, or inability to urinate. Or when your horse comes out of stall, may seem like a drunken sailor or be ataxic. That, that can occur with neurologic disease. Some neurologic disorders are the infectious diseases that we often vaccinate against. Equine's herpes virus can uh, have neurologic disease, rabies, as Dr. Nash showed you, eastern and western encephalitis, uh, West Nile virus can all, will all exhibit neurologic disease. Um, Wobbler syndrome is a disorder of usually young growing animals in the neck, is a, a problem in the way the uh, cervical or neck vertebrae are growing. Um, horses, as you know, may are kind of somewhat suicidal in their reaction to uh, situations and can traumatize their head or their neck in trying to get away from things. Um, horses sometimes have seizures uh, or may have tumors in their brain or spinal cord. Um, so after exam, we're usually there to immunize your horse. Um, we do want to examine your horse to make sure that they are healthy and okay to receive vaccine. Um, goals of vaccination are to minimize risk of infection. So minimize risk of your horse catching 
disease and help, help prevent disease. Vaccination does not always guarantee 100% protection. Core vaccines, so these are vaccines that we recommend your animal gets annually, are rabies, equine encephalitis, for, so eastern and western encephalomyelitis. It's a mosquito-borne disease that we do see in New York State, and it is fatal. Tetanus. Again, horses are very, very susceptible to tetanus toxin, and it is very often fatal. Um, West Nile virus is again a mosquito-borne disease and um, has a high fatality rate. Horses can survive, but um, may get very, very sick. Um, and the protocol, vaccination protocol is gonna ba be based on your individual and their life stage. Um, next vaccines are risk-based vaccines. So where, where your horse lives, what their job is, what age they are, um, how much risk is their exposure to these diseases. Equine influenza and equine herpes virus, most horses we vaccinate at least annually. Um, Potomac horse fever, strangle, equine viral arteritis, botulism are, are again going to be based on your individual animal and their risk of exposure. These things you should discuss with your veterinarian to help design proper vaccination for your animal. Um, and last but not least, poop um, and deworming for us. As, as you're all familiar with, we've gone from a every six to eight week deworming program to basing our worming on fecal monitoring. Um, we're, and the goal is to decrease parasite resistance to the medications we have. Uh, so it means more monitoring of the fecals, less medicating of the animals. Um, the reason we're doing this is there are very low likelihood of new dewormers coming out in the market. And the parasites have evolved resistance to our very good medications we have, and we want to try to keep that under control. We recommend um, doing fecal monitoring every two to four times per year, and want to do that before deworming, at least 14 days before deworming. All we need is two fresh fecal balls, less than 12 hours old. We don't need the whole pile. <laughs> and again, the goal is to reduce, but not necessarily eliminate parasites. Some parasite load in the animal stimulates the immune system to develop resistance. So the goal is not necessarily to eliminate. Um, again, we are we do want you to deworm your animal at least two times per year. We may recommend if your horse happens to be a high shedder, so shedding a high load of eggs in the fecal, we're going to recommend a more frequent deworming for that animal because that animal is infecting your pastures most. Bulls are also going to be on a more frequent deworming program. They are the most susceptible animals to internal parasites. You want to make sure you discuss deworming with your veterinarian. Our website has lots of information about deworming and fecal monitoring. Does anybody have any questions? <laughs>